Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. I am not a liar, is the title of this devotion. Here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, it says, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he, for who does not, mm, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Again, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? I am not a liar. And I believe, in other words, I am not pretending. I'm not just acting. I am not being untrue. No, the love that I feel for you is what consumes me day and night. Why? It's the love of God. Jesus said to Pilate, just before he was sentenced to be crucified by him, for this very purpose in John 18, I have come into the world to bear witness of the truth. And Pilate, having an incredible opportunity to have, a, have an, 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 an encounter with the living God, shrugged off that opportunity by saying, what is truth, and walked off. You see, we can sometimes become really callous in our nature. And that callousness causes us to become self-deceived. And that we think we love when the love we have is not the truth. It's selfishness, self-seeking, self-satisfaction. It's self-want that can be so cruel. Cruel, but you're so blind to how cruel you are. Often it, it finds its expression in adultery. You, you cause your loved one to suffer the pain of rejection in your affection for another and not realizing that affection you have for the other is terribly deceitful. The Bible says, do not be deceived. Adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. The deception of adultery can be so forceful and I'm not saying this with a hard judgment against a person who's going through this. No, the opposite. I have seen the deception. I have seen the deception. It's marveled me. I remember this one man and he cried harder to have to give up the, the woman that he had fallen in love with than his then having to give up his own wife and beautiful children. He cried for the wrong thing. And that is not the truth, my friends. That is not the true love. That is deception. But my goodness, it can get really complicated when you say what I'm saying today. Well, how, Pastor, can I know the truth anymore? I mean, when I'm with my wife, there is no more affection. There is nothing anymore. Love has died. And it's only harsh criticism and harsh strife and harsh unhappiness. And, and, and when I'm with that other person, I, it's sweet. It's affection. It's friendly. And you're, not, and you're saying that's not love. Friends, you will never know what true love is unless you go and follow Jesus Christ. He came to show us true love in his self-sacrifice and in his self-sacrifice when he suffered the pains of God's wrath against our sin nature and the judgment of the law against our sin nature when he suffered the brutality of our sin nature against himself as he was smitten and afflicted and wounded by man his love for the father had an authority over all of that over all that sorrow, over all that pain, over all that abuse, over all that evil. He reigned in his love for the Father. And we see what true love is in Jesus Christ. And God wants us to know this love. And he says here, if you do not feel love for the one whom you can see, 
How can you say you have love for the one whom you cannot see? How can you say you love God whom you cannot see when he is right there and your brothers and sisters in the Lord and you don't love them? You are not in the truth. You're a liar. And praise the Lord, friends. We don't have to live in guile, in deceit. And often God has to deal with our innermost desires and thoughts and ways to bring us into the knowledge of his truth. But I believe that God will lead you into his truth. David prayed this in Psalm 25. He said, lead me in your truth. The word truth there is the word amen. It's made up of the first, middle, and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And this is why the rabbis conclude that it upholds all creation. Lead me in your truth. God is called the God of truth. Jesus prayed in John 17 and in his high priestly prayer that we might know the truth and that he sanctified him. And then he says, your word is truth. And I sanctify myself so that they may be sanctified in the truth. What I am beginning to embody in my self-sacrifice, I will be able to impart into them by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is where I really feel the rubber hits the road, where we separate from what makes us deceitful, what causes us to be a liar when we say we love people, but there is no truth to that love because there is no Christ-like self-sacrifice, self-denial. There is no Christ-like goodness of God coming through you towards those who don't deserve it. Can you hear this? Can you hear what the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us? I, I, I prepared this little scripture here. It's in Ephesians chapter 5. I mentioned it to you already. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him, follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. <clears throat> and walk in love, esteem and delighting in one another as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. Christ, when he suffered for us, the Father saw his love for us. Now listen to this. This is where the truth eliminates in us all the deceit of self-seeking, resentment, bitterness, anger, offense, irritation. And we don't know love. We're full of crud. Our innermost being has all these angers, resentments, outbursts of wrath, envies, jealousies, malice and all of these things hidden there in the natural man. And they come out at, at, at opportune times to spoil the favors and blessings and joys of this life and relationships, homes and families and twist and turn the natures of children who live under that by their parents or whatever. And, and then they learn to become like that. And what is the answer, friends? It's the love of our loving Heavenly Father that Jesus perfectly embodied, that he now gives into you and me by the Holy Spirit. And when you begin to look at Jesus and realize that he's not only the one who gives it, but the one who shows it to give you the example of what it means. Here in 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, if, now let's start at verse one, my brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold, mm, that, that, that sounded good, but I'm thinking, no, this is not what I was after. So <laughs> I apologize. We'll start again. First Peter, that was James chapter two, verse one. First Peter chapter two, verse 18. Uh, yeah. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. Come on, 
be submissive. Have a sweet spirit with your boss, even if he's not very gentle. For this is commendable, if because of conscience towards God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. In other words, that he was not a liar. Jesus came to reveal the truth of the Father's love who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whom stripes, by whom's wounds, you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Wives, Likewise, follow Christ's example, wives, with your own husband. And then he says in verse 7 of chapter 3, Husbands, likewise, dwell with your wife with understanding, giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel, being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love, as brothers, be tender-hearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil, reviling for revival, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing and so forth. Now, my dear friends, the Lord wants us to be people of uprightness and rightness and truth, men and women, that are sincere, wholehearted, and that there's no deceit in us. There's no, nothing hidden in us towards one another. How is that possible, Pastor? It's through the love of our Father. Look at Jesus. He came to show us the love of the Father. And in that perfect love, He was able to love us with all of our failings and weaknesses and shortcomings. And it is in that love that we learn to love as He loved us, and to learn to give as He gave us, and to learn to forgive as He forgave us, and we become like Him. You have to always remember, no matter what pushes you and presses you, you are a child of God, and you're predestined to be conformed to your loving Father's image through the love of Jesus Christ, and to bear His love, his kindness and goodness to everyone around you. Amen. Have a good day.